everyone. Welcome to File Carving and Data Recovery. In this section, we'll introduce the file carving process and important concepts, such as slack, unallocated space, and deleted files. We'll also cover the recycle bin on Windows and a tool to examine it, Rifiuto 2. Next, we will cover file carving tools, a tool to automatically recover deleted files from a disk image, like Foremost, Scalpel, and PhotoRec. Then we'll show how to use Bulk Extractor, a tool that extracts much information, including deleted ones from a disk image. Now we move on to the first video of this section, File Carving Overview. We're going to take a look at the file carving process and important concepts like slack, unallocated space, and deleted files. We'll also cover Rifiuto 2, a tool to examine the recycle bin on Windows. In the first video of Section 3, Overview of the Sleuth Kit and File System Analysis, we saw that the smallest addressable data units on file systems are called blocks or clusters. They could be of different sizes, also depending on the file system, but generally, blocks of 4 kilobytes are used. The block size is therefore the, the smallest disk space that a file can use. If a file is larger than the block size, then various blocks are allocated to that file, the number of blocks depending on that file size. If the file size is not an exact multiple of the block size, the last allocated block is only partially used to store the file's data. The space left between the logical end of the file and the end of the block is called slack space. For example, as we can see in this diagram, if a file size occupies only 2 kilobytes of the last block and the block size is 4 kilobytes, it uses only the first 2 kilobytes and the remaining 2 of the block are unused and forms the file slack space. The analysis of slack space is important for a forensic examiner because some tools, for example, BMAP on Linux, allow to hide data in a file slack space. Slack space could also contain remnants from a previously deleted file. Indeed, when a file is deleted, the relative directory entry is removed, but the master file table entry on Windows and the inode on Linux still remain. Also, its allocated blocks remain intact but are marked as free, which are not used, and can be allocated to another file. These blocks are part of the so-called unallocated space. Unallocated space could also reside between two disk partitions and could be revealed by the MMLS tool, as we've seen in the previous section covering the sleuth kit. Until they are not allocated again and overwritten, the block's contents could be recovered using the sleuth kit tools or with specific data carving tools as we're going to see in the next video. Data carving is the process of identifying and extracting meaningful data out of the unallocated and slack space. It's usually performed to recover those deleted files that no longer have an entry in the files table that could tell which data blocks were allocated to them. In previous sections, we've seen that files are identifiable through the magic numbers included in the files header. Data carving relies on locating the magic number of a certain type of file and copying all the binary data between it and the corresponding end of file marker, or EOF. If the file's data are stored on contiguous blocks, then the process is straightforward. If the file is fragmented, i.e. its blocks are scattered on the disk, then carving becomes more challenging. Algorithms that use heuristic techniques and can also handle files fragmentation have been developed and used in carving tools. On modern operating systems, files are not permanently deleted on a first instance unless the user explicitly does so. Instead, they are first moved to the recycle bin or trash, depending on the OS. They can be restored in its original locations or permanently deleted when the recycle bin is emptied. The data blocks are left untouched and are not marked as free until the file remains in the recycle bin. On Windows XP systems or earlier, deleted files are moved to the recycler folder into the subfolders, named after the security identifiers of the users. The original file names, paths, and deletion times are stored in an index file called Info2. Windows Vista and Newer stores deleted files into a hidden $recycle.bin folder with the same subfolder structure as Windows XP. But information about the files are not stored in Info2. Instead, they're stored in a pair of files for each deleted file whose name begins $1 and dollar sign $R. The first type is an index file that stores the original information while the latter type contains a copy of the deleted file. 
Rifuto 2 is a tool installed on Kali Linux that allows to examine the contents of the recycler bin. Indeed, Rifuto, Rifuto is an Italian word that means trash. Rifuto 2 is made up of two tools, Rifuto to analyze Info2 files and Rifuto Vista to analyze the new $RecycleBin files. On Windows Vista or newer, the usage of Rifuto is straightforward. We simply run the tool with the Info2 file as the unique parameter. The output displays each files in the recycle bin. It shows the deleted time, original path, and the size. Rifiudu Vista is instead usually executed to scan and analyze recycle bin subfolders. The recycle bin begins with the security identifier of the user. Run the tool in the sample folder. And we can see the output is similar to that of the Rifiudu with the Info2 file. Because it displays the index with the deleted time, original path, and the size of each file. In this video, we've covered the file carving process. We introduced concepts like unallocated disk space and file slack space, even the theory behind the identification of, of deleted files. Then we introduced the Windows Recycle Bin and saw how to examine it with Refuto 2 tool.